Hello, baseball fans. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. Welcome to On Deck. I'm Tyler Redman. As always, thank you so much for checking out the channel. I do appreciate it. While you're here, do me a favor. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell for notifications so that you can stay up to date with everything going on here at On Deck and, of course, with the Atlanta Braves. Today we are talking about something probably a little prematurely, but it's a topic that a lot of you have brought to me and asked me about. So I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and get ahead of it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. And we're talking about something that doesn't come around until 2025, but it's something that is important. And that is, will Max Freed be a Brave after he becomes a free agent in 2025? So to start out, I just want to talk about Freed for a second. I know we're all aware that he has had a wonderful start to his career in Atlanta. He's become a fan favorite. He became the team's ace in 2020. He pitched game six of the World Series. That, of course, was the game that the Braves went on to win to win the 2021 World Series. Not to mention he was the 2022 runner-up in Cy Young voting in the National League. He's had a great career. But it's now 2023. I mentioned the World Series team. The roster looks pretty different. Compared to that team, many of the members from the World Series team, many of the heroes from the World Series team are gone. Jock Peterson, Jorge Soler, Will Smith, Luke Jackson, Freddie Freeman, and most recently, Dansby Swanson have all come and gone. The Atlanta Braves organization has made it clear that there is not one person that will change how they approach the finances of the team. Not even Ronald Acuna and Ozzy Albies were enough to change the way the Braves operated. They, too, took a lesser deal to, for a long-term deal with the Braves. So, uh, and obviously none of the former Braves that I mentioned earlier. But what Ronald Acuna, Ozzie Albies, Austin Riley, and I would even say Matt Olson all have in common is that their deals fit the Braves' mold. They were long-term, cheaper deals. And some people have really criticized the Braves for making those long-term cheaper deals. Cheaper is a relative term. I'm aware this is millions of dollars we're talking about. But I, we, we kind of have to address that before we really talk about free. So my thoughts on the long-term cheaper deals to young players. Here they are. Number one, if these deals were not good for the players, the players would not sign them. These players are not being forced to sign these deals. Uh, they are better for them. Uh, could they make more if they didn't sign them? Sure, no doubt about it. But those players took a risk, just like uh, the Braves did in signing for as long as they did. Because look, think about it this way. Uh, Ronald Acuna and Ozzie Albies have both been injured across the past couple of years. What if those injuries, what if those injuries were career-ending? Both of those guys would have lost a ton of money in the deals that they could have signed a couple of years prior. So they got a lot of security by signing those early deals. Max Fried, though, is different. Max Fried has not signed a long-term extension. He has gotten arbitration over the past couple of seasons, but there hasn't really been anything, no rumor, no inkling of information out there that Max Fried is interested in an extension. There's been no leak that the Braves are interested in an extension, although it's hard to believe that the Braves have not at least had a private conversation with Fried about an extension. It would just be very surprising to me. The guy that won Game 6 of the World Series for you was second in Cy Young voting hasn't been communicated with about an extension. It, it would just really surprise me if that was the case. In fact, uh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they've had multiple conversations or attempts to, to get him to sign an extension. So if that's the case, they obviously haven't landed with Freed signing a long-term contract. So what's the holdup? Well, the only logical holdup here is that it's Max Freed. And let me be clear before I get go any further. I am not criticizing Max Freed here. I would never do that for a player negotiating his value. What I do think is happening, though, is Max Freed is holding out for free agency. There's nothing wrong with that. Every player has a right to do that. And it's look, it's not like you hear Max Freed speaking out, saying that he, he wants to stay here. He he's belongs in Atlanta. You don't hear that. And he might just not be vocal about that kind of thing, but you haven't heard from either party, both Freed and the Braves. Uh, the only time you've ever heard any of any sort of thing similar to this is when Freed either wins or loses his arbitration case. So uh, if you didn't see it, Max Freed most recently lost his arbitration case in his third year of arbitration. Uh, 
Last year, though, Freed won his case. Back then, the Braves wanted to pay him $6.6 million. He won $6.85. Of course, in 2022, he was second in Cy Young voting and led the Braves to their first 100-win season in years. So, not really a surprise that he won that case. This year, though, he lost. Freed wanted to be paid $15 million. That was $1.5 million more than what the Braves had in mind. So, Atlanta won the case, and Freed will be paid $13.5 million in 2023. Now, despite the defeat, Freed did match uh, Garrett Cole's former, I guess, record for the highest decided by an arbitration panel, the highest value paid decided by an arbitration panel, that is $13.5 million. So it's the most, in theory, you can win in arbitration up until this point. Uh, could that affect negotiations between Freed and the Braves? Sure. But remember, an arbit arbiter is a third party separate from the Braves, separate from Freed. This is the guy who ultimately just decides what you're going to be paid when the two parties meet. So it's not really like the Braves are right there going, nope, we're only going to pay you this much. That's not what this is. You have a middleman that decides uh, what's going on. So the Braves are kind of let off the hook uh, in, in that sense. So uh, really, arbitration is a small part of this story. Um, the real story is that this is one of those cases that has slipped by Atlanta. You see all these players getting locked up, you know, Michael Harris, Ronald Acuna, Ozzie Albies, Matt Olson, Austin Riley, Sean Murphy even, most recently. So could, could Freed hold some resentment for not being one of those players? Sure, but I don't think that's the problem. I, I, I don't see the Braves not signing Freed to a long-term deal. And the, the biggest reason I don't see the Braves doing that is because they recently signed uh, Spencer Strider to one of these long-term deals. If he can get one, surely the guy who won you know a World Series game for you, the, the last World Series game for you, and was second in Cy Young Award winning, could get a deal like that. I, I think Freed wants to test free agency. That's what I really think this is about. And look, if you need more proof, let's put up the list of these contracts. You know, Spencer Strider is the only starting pitcher on this list, right? Six years, $75 million. But the fact that the Braves attacked early and landed Strider to a longer term deal says that they value promising starting pitching. Uh, not that anyone had to doubt that. I mean, look at what the Braves, look at how they recruit. They go out and get pitchers. That's the way they've always done it. That's the way the Braves have always built their teams is around pitching. Most of their pitching prospects, uh, most of their prospects in general are pitchers. So looking at Strider, again, they obviously value starting pitching. He, look, Strider's phenomenal. He won, you know, rookie of the year runner up. I get all that. Uh, he had a phenomenal season. But again, Freed is on another level. Freed is a guy that you, you got to lock up. I, I just think that the Braves had to have had that conversation with Max Freed. I would be very surprised. But, you know, especially considering where the Braves are in their minor leagues, I doubt they want to lose such an integral player in the organization in the midst of what is a possible dynasty in Atlanta. I mean, you're talking about, no joke, a decade almost guaranteed of success based on the players you have locked up. So, you also look at the timeline for Brave starters. Charlie Morton is a free agent the same year Max Freed is, as is Mike Soroka. Now, granted, there's a lot to find out about Mike Soroka come this season, but essentially, based on the roster currently, you would be left with Spencer Strider, Kyle Wright, and whoever steps up out of Kobe Allard, Ian Anderson, Bryce Elder, and Waskari Noah. Now, granted, that is only internal options. That's not counting, really, uh, the prospects right now. We don't know who's going to step up. Uh, in that mix, but I hate to compare this to Freddie Freeman and Dansby Swanson. I truly do. I don't want to compare it to that, but it's certainly showing a lot of the same warning signs that Freddie Freeman and Dansby Swanson showed. Both parties, both the Braves and Max Freed, have been very quiet about an extension. We haven't heard anything. The Braves have not made it clear that Freed is a priority. They haven't signed him to this long-term deal. They haven't, you know, you don't hear Double A coming out saying, we want to sign Freed. That hasn't been discussed. Granted, we're two seasons away from it at the moment. There's no reason to necessarily talk about it. But also, he's the one real outlier uh, out of all these guys that, that haven't been signed long term, that, that are fundamentally a part of the organization. There are others that have not been signed long term. You know, Eddie Rosario is not signed long term. Um, you know, but Eddie Rosario didn't grow up in the Braves organization. So that's my point, right? Free grew up in the minors with the Braves. Obviously, he was traded, you know, in the midst of that as well uh, to the Braves. But 
he spent his entire major league career in Atlanta. So I just think I, I would be surprised if, if Freed has not been given that offer. Now, that all being said, it's not necessarily a bad thing for Freed to not accept an an offer, at least the first offer he gets, right? From a personal standpoint, that is not bad. It's not always someone's fault. It does not always mean they are a bad teammate or a bad per- It We're not talking about that. We are talking about the money, though. Let's assume that the Braves did extend an offer to free. Let's just assume that happened for a second for in, for a theoretical reason. One, one that he turned down without our knowledge. So behind closed doors, the Braves basically gave free the deal. We don't know about it. He turned it down, right? We don't know about it, but let's just assume that happened for a second. Assuming that happened, that is well within his right to do, especially considering that he has taken less pay in the past few years that he could potentially get in that extension. He opted to take less pay from the Braves to wait until the payday that is 2025. He opted to to bet on himself, bet on himself to stay healthy, bet on himself to perform, and, and not take the upfront pay. Um, that's the other side of these long-term deals because these these deals do offer a lot of security. If Ozzie Albies had you know, never played another game, he'd still receive every bit of the $35 million that's guaranteed to him, right? He'd still receive that if he, you know, had a career-ending injury, you know, or something like that. Keep in mind, Ronald Acuna and Ozzy Albies both got paid prior to their most recent injuries. Had those injuries been, you know, problematic in that sense, then those guys would still be paid. Acuna would get every bit of the $100 million he's guaranteed, and so would Ozzy Albies. That's the security behind it. Freed, though, opted to take his chances on his productivity in his younger years and his health, and if he indeed doesn't sign that extension – it will pay off for him financially. I mean, you look at what starting pitchers are going for right now, especially a guy who most recently got second in Cy Young Award, you know, winning. I, you know, I look at that and I say, well, I mean, you're talking, if he wins the Cy Young, I mean, you're talking Scherzer money. You know, that's $40 million a year. And I, I, you can't blame the guy. He could leave a lot of money on the table. But let's compare him to the other long-term deals that have happened in Atlanta. Uh, you're looking on your screen there. there. There's a common thread through this, you know, and, and that is, frankly, ties to Atlanta and security. That is the common thread. So Michael Harris from Atlanta, Matt Olson from Atlanta, Austin Riley from Mississippi, but still geographically close uh, to the Braves, you know, closer than a lot of other teams would get you to home. Uh, Sean Murphy came from Oakland. That's a huge improvement. He also got a huge deal that he would not have gotten previously. Ozzie Albies, young player at the time uh, from Curacao, got a lot of security. Uh, Five million a year might sound like not much compared to a lot of other players, but that is security uh, for life. I mean, that that secures you you and your family for life. You can't blame the guy. Ronald Acuna, same situation. Eight years, a hundred million. He's getting twelve and a half million a year, but it's guaranteed money long term. So. That, you know, I, I think that matters. And, and same for Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider, you know, got secured. He's with the Braves for the next seven years, six, seven years. And he's, you know, secure as a young player. That's, you're financially good, right? That's the big common thread is security. You know, Free took the risk. And you have to commend him for it. He bet on himself. And, you know, the, the real thing is, I don't think, you know, Freed hasn't made the decision necessarily Freed hasn't made the decision because Freed doesn't really fit those categories. He's not from Atlanta or anywhere near it. In fact, he grew up in San Diego as a Dodgers fan. Uh, he's not a foreign player that needed to secure himself. He's not a player that felt like he needed to secure himself early on. And assuming that he has been given that offer, all of this is on the assumption that he has been at least somewhat offered an extension. Uh, he has been willing to bet on himself for free agency. So if I were Freed's agent and there wasn't going to be any hurt feelings about, you know, with Freed at least, about leaving Atlanta like Freddie had, you know, the, the hurt feelings about leaving Atlanta, not wanting to leave Atlanta. If Freed wanted to stay in Atlanta wholeheartedly, then obviously that's a deal breaker. But if if he's good with, you know, taking looks around, you know, if I'm his agent, I'm telling him, hey, don't sign with Atlanta. That's what I'm telling him because you would leave a ton of money on the table. Let's say they offered him $20 million a year for the next 10 years. Let's say they gave him the Austin Riley contract. That would obviously be a great contract within the Braves, but if he can make 
40 million in San Diego and be at home, you obviously understand where this is going. And even if it's not San Diego, if he can make 40 million in Arizona, that's still 20 more million dollars a year, right? And, and we don't know where he's going to end up, but that's what I'm saying. He could make a lot more money on the open market. Now, here's the thing about the open market. If Freed wants to be a Brave, I don't think he can go to the open market. I don't think Atlanta is going to get themselves in a bidding war with another team for Max Freed. The reason I say that, we've seen how they've handled the other deals. They've never done that. They've given the offer and they've walked away. This is what we can do. This is the best we can do. That's our best offer. They are not going to get in a Carlos Correa style war over whether or not they're going to sign. He's going to sign to the Mets, to the Twins, or or to another team. They're not going to do that. They're not going to be a part of that. You know, I they have a specific mission in mind, and I think they're going to stick with that. And I think if Freed fits the bill, if he fits what the Braves want to do, then then they will certainly give their best shot. But if he goes above and beyond in the free agency market, then I, I think he's gone. Now, that being said, I do want to backtrack for just a second because if there is one guy that I would spend the money for, the, the one guy that I would pay more than anybody else, it's Max Freed for a number of reasons. Number one, he's a great starting pitcher. No doubt about it. One of the best in the game, and I will stick by that. Number two, the way the Braves are set up right now, they are weak in one department, starting pitching. That is where we have not locked up. We got catchers locked up. We got infielders locked up. Outfield is pretty much locked up. Your bullpen's pretty much straight for the most part. Your starting pitching is a little weak. reason I say that, again, come 2025, Charlie Morton is a free agent and likely at the tail end of his career anyway. Uh, you're left with Kyle Wright, who's phenomenal. Spencer Strider, again, phenomenal. We'll see how he is come that time. He, he's only had one season under his belt. But you you don't have much other than that. And that's the reason, if you want a good one, two, three punch, that would be it. Max Freed, Kyle Wright, Spencer Strider. Now, granted, you have Mike Soroka in there. You got a couple of young guys that could perform, but there's no doubt about it that if you want someone to lead your starting rotation, Max Freed's the guy. But will the Braves change their ways? I don't think so. I think if, if the Braves are going to get freed, they have to extend him. I don't think they're going to get in a bidding war. That's not how they operate. Frankly, it's not how Liberty Media lets them operate, financially speaking. It, it, it's just, it can't be done. Uh, and we've seen that with Freddie. We've seen it with Dansby. We, we've seen it too many times. If Freed wants to be a Brave, he will be a Brave, but he's going to have to do it before he hits free agency. Mark my words. That being said, that's the end of the video. I appreciate you watching. Please do me a favor. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications so that you can stay up to date with everything going on here at On Deck and, of course, with the Atlanta Braves. Also, let me know down below, do you think Max Freed will be an Atlanta Brave after 2025? What do you expect out of 2023 for the Atlanta Braves? Let me down below. I'll be sure uh, to respond back to you. And as always, again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here at On Deck. Baseball fans. Make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to this channel. As always, thank you for your support.